What's up kings and queens? It's your boy Dan from Daft Previews and in today's video I'm going to take you through some of my best bets on this upcoming 10 game slate. You heard that right. 10 games. It's been a long time since we've had to preview this many games but your boy did it. I'm tired as hell and I'm here to show you what I've got. And before we jump into the bets we do have to recap on the day what that was. I went two and one in the videos I shared in the last video. Winners pretty sweat free. Champagne two three pointers. He hit that in the first half. Told you guys I'm taking him for three, and he cashed that as well. We also had Chet Holmgren over 24.5 points and rebounds. My man finished on 39, covered that with ease. Now, we made a stack of profit on those two players in the VIP section, and I'll talk to you guys about that in a second. But before we do, we need to talk about the loser of the day, and that is me. But in reality, Dante DiVincenzo, the bet that I took in him, that was awful. So for the second time in a week, I've made a stupid decision by betting on this man, and I'm not going to do it. Again, I'll give him a week break. I'll probably touch DiVincenzo again, but a bad play regardless, and I could own that. But 2-1, and one, still profitable if you tailed on just those picks alone. But if you really want to cash out, let me show you something. Boom! It's your VIP, baby. 5.2 units profit. That's two two days in a row. We've made over 5 units profit. 10, day, 10 units in the last two days. Talking about the other winners, Jamal Murray under his points and rebounds, Peyton Pritchard for 10 points. In the NFL, we had Sam Darnold under his 31.5 pass attempts. All of these were one-unit players. Then we cashed on value singles. The value singles are always plus 200 or better. Champagne, plus 200 to get three three-pointers. Peyton Pritchard, plus 350 to score 15 points. Then the value plays. And nobody does value plays the way that I do, which is what makes my VIP so unique. We hit Chet Holmgren over his points, over his rebounds at plus 200. And we also hit him to get 20 points and 10 rebounds at plus 550. The day honestly could have been so much better, but another five units profit, who's going to frown at that? So for those of you guys who were on a trial, there's a lot of people who trialed my VIP. Hopefully you guys are happy and you ride with us for the rest of the season. If you haven't had a chance to take a look at this, the season package is where you want to go. You get an insane discount, 60% off. So check out the season package. Every bet that I make, every straight prop, value single, value play, parlay, you'll get access to. Check that out. The link for that's in the video description below. Use the code MJ23 to get 60% off. That does end in the next couple of days, so take advantage. So are you guys ready for some fire picks and some dope-ass analysis? Then let's go. So we're jumping into Props Madness. It's a tool that I'm riding with for this NBA season. It gives you the most advanced data you're going to find. And if you're really into betting player props the way that I am, you are going to love this. Feel free to check it out. Seven-day free trial in the video description below. I'm the only person on YouTube who's offering a discount code for this as well. So use the code DAFT and you'll get 25% off your subscription. I promise you, you will not regret it. And if you want to learn how to use it, you can watch my videos. I'll be using it every single day. Now, we spoke about dark mode, light mode, light mode in the last video. 99% of you guys said dark mode is the way to go. So you know what I'm going to do? We're going to keep it at dark mode. I don't want to upset nobody. So we'll keep it on dark mode. We'll get through these picks. If you have any questions on Props Madness, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. Let's do this. My first pick, I do like Andre Drummond here. It was the first uh, name that I wrote down once I saw the, the lines open up. And we're looking at his points plus rebounds. And I feel a lot of people are just going to bet his rebounds. And I don't like doing what everyone else is doing. So I'm betting his points plus his rebounds. You're probably looking at this and it's like, you've got a graph with only nine games of worth of data on it. How the hell does that work? Well, because this is props madness, I'm allowed to use filters to really give me the type of information I'm looking for. So what you can see on this graph, before you, we get to this hit rate, talking about the shot chart. Now, you didn't really need this shot chart if you know Andre Drummond, but he scores 99% of his points in the paint, 84% of his points in the restricted area, right? No surprise there. Now, Andre Drummond up against the Toronto Raptors in this game, and if we look at their defense from last season, which is pretty much carried over to this season based off what I've seen, uh, this shot chart's telling us that they're bottom five in terms of defending the restricted area, and they're not much better outside of that. So, in terms of where they like, where he likes to score and how these guys play defense there, it's not great. Now, looking at his play type, we can see Andre Drummond, he scores the majority of his points in with putbacks, right? He gets his own points, really. Offensive rebound, put that shit back in. Toronto Raptors, one of the worst teams in the league. Bottom three in terms of defending and limiting putbacks. So the matchup here for Andre Drummond is absolutely perfect. Now, looking at these filters, knowing what we know, I've removed the games where Joel Embiid was not there. 
and I've put his minutes here to 25 to 39 as a range. The reason why I've done that is because he only played, what, 25, 26 minutes in the last game against the Milwaukee Bucks in the opener, but he would have been scheduled to play a lot more. The problem was he had Giannis just ramming the ball down his throat, found some foul trouble, and that impacted his ability to get some minutes. Still finished with 13 boards, though, so a really strong outing there for Andre Drummond. He finished with 10 points, 13 rebounds, right, in 25 minutes. So what I've done for the filters in this, I've looked at a minimum of 25 minutes, knowing that he's going to play a lot more than that. But 25 minutes, if he, foul, if he finds foul trouble, he'll probably play at 25, right? So we're looking at games without Joel Embiid, where he plays more than 25 minutes. And you can see that there were nine games where that occurred last season. In those games, average 33.9 points plus rebounds. So the hit rate here for Andre Drummond, absolutely amazing. So we know the matchup is great. He's going to have the opportunities. I think he's going to absolutely feast. Uh, I'll be transparent with one of the value players I'm running here on Andre Drummond. I think he gets close to 20 rebounds in this game. So I've got some sort of bet for Andre Drummond to get 20 boards. Feel free to check that out. Another good look here for Andre Drummond is his first quarter rebounds. I haven't delved too much in the first quarter props yet this season. There will be a time and place where I do a bet a lot of those, maybe on a smaller slate, but I do like Andre Drummond to really get busy. The Raptors really lacking some size inside. I'd hate to be Jakob Bertel tomorrow, but best of luck to him. With my next pick, we're looking at LaMelo Ball today. He doesn't have a massive sample size of data from last year. He only played 22 games. Uh, and for LaMelo Ball, I'm really liking the assist prop here against the Atlanta Hawks. Now, if you just look at what happened last season, he averaged eight assists. His line in this game is at 7.5, right? Average eight assists, played 22 games, impacted by injury in some of those, tried to return, eventually got injured again, LaMelo Ball style. But I absolutely love this matchup here against Atlanta. I did some some digging. The head-to-head -head data is pretty good on how he plays against Atlanta. The, the Atlanta Hawks right now play with a whole lot of pace. So do the Hornets, so the opportunity is going to be there. In terms of who's who in the zoo, Brandon Miller is out, got injured on opening night. So that's really going to open up the usage rate here for Lamelo Ball. wasn't high enough. So he's going to see a lot more ball. I like him to score. I like him to cover his point sign. I won't lie to you, but I love him to cover his assist line. I think the opportunities are really going to be there. When these two teams match up, he seems to rack up the numbers. Now, how do we use Props Madness to find an edge here? So eight assists on the season, we can start to play around with these filters. So the Hawks, they'll be in the bottom half in terms of defensive rating. So we can automatically make that change. We can then take a look at his minutes. Lamelo Ball played, what, almost 40 minutes in that last game? 38 minutes he played. So even if we get conservative with it, we remove the filter and put it to, what did he do in 35 minutes? And it gets a little bit better, averaging 9.4 assists when he plays 35 plus minutes. And one thing that also helps is just understanding what the total means in the prop. I think this game scheduled to score, what, 230 points. It's going to be wild. There's going to be a lot of points, a lot of assists. The Hawks, they allowed 120 points per game last season. Based on what we're seeing this year, not much has changed. His usage rate is going to be huge. I'd expect at least 30% usage rate. So these potential assist numbers are going to be through the roof. In that opening night, LaMelo Ball, I think well, he finished with 11 assists. Pretty crazy against the Rockets, but check it out. 19 potential assists. We only need to get eight assists here. And if he can get 15 to 20 potential assists, I feel like this is going to cash easy. So I am liking LaMelo Ball to cover his assist prop. By the time you're watching this, it's probably juiced to the max. Minus 135 on DraftKings, the best place you can get it at right now. Odds obviously better at the time when I sent it out to VIP. This might move to 8.5 by the time you're watching this. And at 8.5, I would still play it. If you are able to catch it at 7.5 and, and it is juiced, add another leg to it um, to remove some of that juice. You can take it. Um, Trey Young, whatever the lowest assist you can get for him. I think that's pretty safe. Or you can look at LaMelo Ball to get 15 points perhaps, um, try to remove some of that juice and get some more value. But I am liking LaMelo Ball to distribute the hell out of that thing. Now, this game, probably my favorite one to bet on. Um, so I do have another pit in this game, uh, looking at someone from the other team. And I'm looking at Onyeka Okongwu. And I do like his points plus rebounds in this. Now, if you're just looking at the data, especially from last year, you're probably thinking, why the fuck are you betting on Ye Onyeka Okongwu? But I'm liking what I'm seeing. Now, let's talk about the game that just happened real quick. Played against Brooklyn, um, had 28 points and 8 in 28 minutes. 
What's really important about that, that he played more minutes than Clint Capella. Now, if you watched and followed the Hawks last year, everyone was kind of sitting and waiting for a to take Capella's place. The only reason they're keeping him is because they paid him so much that they can't find a trade partner for him. But I think even with Onyeka starting on the bench, he sees it. We look, <laughs> he's got 100% of his points right under the basket. Um, but if we look at last season to get a bigger sample size, we can see that 72% of his points are in the restricted area, another 12% in the paint. So 84% of his buckets in the paint. And if we looked at Charlotte, you can see that they're bottom three um, in terms of limiting points in that area. So the matchup for Okongwu is fantastic. If you look at how he scores his points, cutting to the basket, in the pick and roll, and getting shit and putbacks, all these things point to a great matchup for Onyeka Okongwu. Now, how do we use Prof's Madness to find an edge? So the first thing I like to do Always put it on regular season stats because that's what we're comparing it to. We've got to muck around with the minutes here. So even if we get conservative with it, he played 25 minutes in the last game. But let's just look at the games where he played more than 25 minutes. The next thing we want to look at is let's look at the bottom 10 teams in the restricted area, perhaps. See what happens. Now, that looks great already. Now, six out of eight games against the teams that are terrible defending under the basket, he averaged 23.5 points and rebounds. So we're looking at 19.5 here. He's cashed it extremely well. Another angle that you can look at if you're playing around with Props Madness here is you might want to look at his field goal attempts. He took 12 shots in that last game. What if we say he's going to take at least eight shots, right? Eight shots with these new minutes and check it out. If when Onyeka takes the minimum of eight shots and plays 25 minutes, he's covered this line in 14 out of 16 games, averaging 24.6 points and rebounds. Now, if you didn't have access to points and rebounds, the points prop is what I'd be playing. Because if you leave it on the same filter and we look at his points alone, he's covered in 12 out of 16 games, averaging 15 points. His line's at 11.5. So I really like the edge here from Onyeka Okongwu. He's going to see the minutes and the opportunity because I think right now he is better than Clint Capella. He's got the great matchup under the basket. And based on his play types, he should be able to get a lot of easy buckets. Trey Young's going to be whipping that thing around. Keep in mind, Trey Young's assist line in this game is at 11.5. I wouldn't be surprised to see five of those go to this man right here. That's 10 points already. So Nyeka Okongwu, over 19.5 points and rebounds. That's another pick that I'm on. Um, what else do I have on here? Uh, let's take a look at Jay Brunson, actually. I bet on Jalen Brunson in the opener, um, and it did not work in my favor. But Jalen Brunson, up against a familiar opponent here, it's the Indiana Pacers. Um, I like Jalen Brunson in the first game against Boston. Extremely efficient. I didn't see the blowout, but we didn't get to see him reach his full potential. But I don't foresee the Knicks getting blown out in this game. Um, I think it should be close for him to play his full set of minutes. Hopefully at least 36 to 40. I think that would be a nice spot. Now, having a quick look at Indiana, what the hell do they do? Indiana, they had this similar shot chart all season. They don't allow three-pointers at all, but everything under the rim, in the paint, and in the mid-range, they give it up like crazy. It's a real analytical approach to their defense. Defense. And if you look at Jalen Brunson, we can see he can score at the basket, he scores in the paint, and he scores in the mid-range, and he can score above the break. But 68% uh, of his points come in the areas where the Indiana Pacers leak the most, right? So the matchup is nice when it comes to shot zones. Then we look at play type analysis. He scores most of his points in the pick and roll. Indiana, the worst team in the league at defending the pick and roll. He also gets to the free throw line a lot. The man's a free throw merchant, right? The Indiana Pacers give up the most free throws. Now, all signs point to yes. I think Jalen Brunson has a great game here. Now, how can we be a little bit more certain using props madness and the filters available? So the first thing we want to do, let's chuck a minutes filter on there. And let's say Jalen Brunson gets at least 35 minutes. Look, he's playing for Tibbs, right? Tibbs going to run him into the ground. But let's say he gets 35 minutes in this game, right? He only played 24 minutes in the first game. He ain't tired. But just by filtering out the games where he plays 35-plus minutes, he's already over in 23 out of the last 27 games. Let's be conservative with it, just in case there could be a blowout here. Let's look at games where he plays at least 30. I think that's a good starting point. Now, we know when it comes to his play style, right? He's versing a team that's one of the worst at defending pick and rolls. Let's look at how he performed against the teams in the bottom 10 defending the pick and roll. Looking all right, 16 out of 26, averaging 32.8 points per game, right? Now, if we look at his predominant shot zone, um, and his that is within the paint. So let's just look at the bottom 15 teams for a bigger sample size, and that improves to 13 out of 22, 32.5 hit rate. But if I'm being completely honest with you with Jalen Brunson, 
This just comes down to minutes. Is he going to play enough minutes? If he only plays 30 minutes, then this might be somewhat difficult to cash. If we look at the games against the Pacers where he played over 30 minutes, 28, 40, and 39 points. One thing to keep in mind, when he scored 28 points against him was in December. Uh, Julius Randle, he was still, still playing in this game. After Julius Randle went down, Jalen Brunson went mad, and you can see it here in this data. Julius Randle went out at the end of January, I believe. He ran into the Pacers and absolutely killed him, 40 and 39 points. So we need 28.5 points here for Jalen Brunson. I do like it. I think we see a 30-point bomb from the little man. Let's go. Jalen Brunson over his points. Now, before we get to my last pick, I am going to ask you to like the video, subscribe to the channel. You guys know I need it. You know I have a dream to create this content full-time. Right now, I'm working 10 hours a day. I've got two children under three years old, and I'm trying to balance everything with all this content, all this research, and it's making me tired as hell, and I need your help. I need to grow this channel. I need to get more partnerships, more sponsorships, so I can try to do this full-time. The way that you can help me do that, liking the video, dropping a comment below, and subscribing to the channel. Another way that you can help me out monetarily is by checking out my partners, Chalkboard, Parlay Play, Rebet, Dabble Fantasy, Better, and Boom. Uh, these guys will all pay me a little bit of cash. If you happen to sign up with them, put $10 in there, and they'll reward me. That's how well done, you excellent creator, you. So if you can help me out, check out those apps. And if you do sign up to any of them and make a deposit, reach out to me. I'll give you a month of my VIP picks for free, baby. Sound good? Let's do it. So for my last pick, we're looking at Evan Mobley to score some points today, over 16.5 points. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that all the players that are picked all happen to be playing in the Eastern Conference. And that's because I've only researched half the games. I've got a lot of more research to do into the Western Conference to see what picks I come up with. So you could argue that this is half of the bets, the straight bets that I'm going to have. I'm also going to have value singles and value plays. So it's going to be a very big day on the NBA. Um, VIP, my season pass, that's where you go to check it out. But let's talk about Evan Mobley and why. Because if you just looked at this data, looking at his last 27 games, you'd probably be confused as fuck. It's like, I don't know whether the best guy's over or under. Now, I had a pretty good read on him in the last game. Um, I did tell you, I don't know if I'm going to take Evan Mobley overs or Jared Allen overs. Shit, didn't matter. They both went over anyway. Evan Mobley, 25 points against the Toronto Raptors in only 27 minutes. 9 of 14, 1 from 2 from deep, and 6 free throws. Um, so it was a blowout. You have to play the fourth quarter, so we're not worried about any rest, uh, impacts, injuries, nothing like that. But it should be fresh and ready to go here against the Detroit Pistons. Now, looking at Evan Mobley, 65% of his points right under the rim. That's his favorite spot. Outside of that, still in the paint, baby. So a lot of points in the paint. If we look at Detroit's defense last year, bottom eight right under the rim, bottom five in the rest of the area in the paint. So safe to say he's got another good matchup today, Evan Mobley. And if we look at the play types, check it out. He scores a lot of points cutting to the basket. It's hard to rank teams on that. But as a pick and roll man, he does very well. This Detroit Pistons team, one of the worst in the league. He also gets to the free throw line, second worst in the league. So the matchup is real nice here for Evan Mobley. Um, we can filter things out, make it look even better let's do it so he played 25 minutes in a blowout loss so if we're looking at range at least we can say he's going to play at least 25 minutes he took what 14 shots i believe let me double check that 12 shots no he took 14 shots right 14 shots and he didn't really get the minutes but if we look at his field goal attempts and let's say he takes at least 12 in this game all right suddenly we're looking at 19 games where he played uh where he took 12 shots in a game i need to put the filter back on for his minutes 25 minutes didn't change things too much. So 11 out of 18 games where he played 25 minutes, where he took at least 12 shot attempts, and he hit this line uh, in 11 out of 18 at 18.4 points per game. So we do like that. Uh, this is a road game for them. And if you look at his damage and the work done on the road, we can see he's now covered in seven out of nine games, averaging 19.7. I'm actually going to check my sports book just to make sure I'm right about that. Is he playing on the road? Hmm, I'd hate to fuck that up. Um, and I was wrong. He's playing. Let me read. <laughs> God, Detroit are on the road. So at home, he's covered this in four out of nine, averaging 17.2 points. So at home, probably not the greatest look, but we can filter things out a little bit better. Let's look at the shot zones, right? We know that team is playing today. The Pistons, not good at defending within the paint. If we filter this out to the bottom 15 teams at defending the paint, Suddenly, we're at 19.3 points per game, 8 out of 11 in terms of a hit rate. And if we just remove the data from the whole equation right now, and you just honestly think about it, 
his matchup today is going to be Tobias Harris on the defensive end. Evan Mobley is going to smoke his J. Cole looking ass. I'm telling you that. Like Jared Allen, Jalen Duran, they're going to be beating each other up the whole time. There's going to be arms everywhere. Evan Mobley is going to have a massive mismatch. In the offseason, started working on his handle, his outside shot, some work in transition. This Detroit team likes to play with pace. I think he's going to see ample opportunity here. Uh, Evan Mobley, I do like it. Over 16.5 points. Now, that's the last pick I'm going to share in this video, but I can promise you it's not going to be the last bet that I put down. If you're interested in checking out all my vi my bets, I'm telling you, VIP, VIP is the place to go. Now, if you're somebody whose unit size is like less than $10, probably not worth it for you because with what you're paying for, you'll probably end up breaking even every single month with the profit that you make. But if you're someone with some decent volume, bankroll management, who's done this for quite some time, then I really think you can appreciate all the stuff that happens in VIP, the amount of work, the analysis, the strategy for parlays and bankroll management. Things are really starting to heat up, and I want you guys to jump on this train with me. And if you made it this far into the video, I do appreciate y'all. I honestly do. I'll catch you guys next, one, next time. Best of luck to you, best of luck to me, and best of luck to us. Let's go.